There are actually a few studies out there that have gotten specific numbers that we can kind of cite to that shows that guys just don't want to seek care. They're from all around the world. We got one from Britain, all right? It's a British Social Attitude Survey. This was done in 2018, and they identified that men were less likely than women to seek medical help. 35% of men reporting that they would seek help if they experienced a health problem. Only 35%. Like you would think maybe like even 50% or something like that, but 35%. It's crazy. That's low. Like one out of three people that even if they had a health problem, basically are still like, ah, fuck this. I'm not going to do anything about it. Only one third of them are going to be doing something. Two thirds are just going to unfortunately, you know, just bear that burden of their health. This is the Man Up Podcast, the doctor's guide to men's health. Each week on our podcast, we interview the top specialists of the field on various topics in men's health. You have questions that you are too afraid to ask. We have the answers. This week, our episode is titled Stigmas in Men's Health. Let's talk about it. I'm Dr. Kevin Chu, and I'm joined as always by my co-host, Dr. Justin Dubin. Justin, this is going to come out uh, over the July 4th, like five-day weekend. You got any plans coming up? I'm going to go say hi to a couple of our friends in Boca, Matt and Jenna, shout out to them. Haven't seen them in a bit. Going to go hang out with them for the weekend. Might do a little fireworks. You know, we're on the beach over here. So probably check out some fireworks for 4th of July on Tuesday. Unfortunately, I'm working on Monday. I don't know about you. What do you got lined up? Uh, Same thing. I got a couple kids' birthday parties over the weekends. You know, some some animal farms I'll be going to. Uh, But yeah, trying to check out some fireworks. I also do not have a five-day weekend. I'll be working on Monday as well. But yeah, you know, probably do a little bit of barbecuing and some uh, relaxing on uh, on the actual July fourth. Um, so, but you know what? Hey, this reminded me though. This, this we it's been one year since we released the episode on fireworks and yes. things that they maybe can. We cut. should highlight that. Yeah, yeah, maybe we should highlight that at some point. That was a good episode. That was a quick hitter. That was really fun. But also, you know, when we were here together, every 4th of July, we were always grilling together at your apartment complex. Oh, yeah. And, That's right. And now... Uh, someday, now someday those have... pictures of us being pretty patriotic may come afloat, you know? So. Yeah, those are actually <laughs> incredible pictures. Uh, yeah, that was those were great times. But now, yeah, I'll hopefully grill. It's insane to me my building has no grill. Like, there's Really? Just, I'm in Florida. I can't grill in my building. There's no outside grill. I can't buy a grill for my balcony. It's a disaster. I love grilling, but um, it must be because there's like so many people in your building complex. It probably was like more of a logistics issue. I got to imagine it's that, right? I have no idea. I just know Mm -hmm. it's a disaster because I would be grilling all day, every day. In Chicago, you were grilling almost on a nightly basis. I was grilling at least once a week. I would grill for the week and then I would just be done. And uh, now I can't do that anymore. I, I totally miss it so much, but it is what it is. You know, I've yeah. treated in some, some views for no barbecue. Hey, I must so. say the views are muy bien. Excellent. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, but yeah, so today we're going to be talking about men's health stigmas. Um, we're, fu- we're, we decided, I know we just finished up men's health month in June and we, we spoke a lot about fertility and a lot of that was to kind of destigmatize those conversations. Um, but we do feel like we didn't really highlight the, the stigmas around men's health in general. Um, we just finished up recording with uh, Amy and April over at the Shameless Sex Team. They're awesome. And uh, their episode came out. Uh, we're recording this a week, you know, a few days before the episode's released, but it was the week before this episode's released. Um, and we wanted to piggyback on it with similar ideas, similar concepts, because it's such an important topic about, you know, talking about these problems. And that's the real reason why we created this podcast in, in the first place to get good, reliable information and kind of motivate you guys to talk with your healthcare providers for about your men's health issues. Yeah. For our listeners out there who haven't checked out that episode with the shameless sex, um, podcasters. It, it, it was it was a great discussion. And, you know, we'll cover a lot about it in this episode as well. But, you know, if you want a fun episode and, you know, have some laughs, uh, definitely check it out. I, I had a great time. 
Yeah, they rock. They they are so, so good. And they bring some really interesting points and really interesting perspectives during that episode. Um, so we definitely, definitely highly recommend that you check that episode out. It's a good compliment to the episode you're about to listen to. Um, they're going to be coming on hopefully in the fall again, talk about some other fun stuff. So, uh, you know, they are just awesome. And we, we always want to thank them for uh, inviting us on and, and their support. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this, this, this topic is really dear to me and you, I know you, you've gone to many conferences, you've talked a lot about it, but you know, our health is, you know, in our hands. And so Mm -hmm. for guys, we just don't want to talk about it. And I think a lot of that not talking will lead to not doing, and there's so much out there that can do to, you know, make yourself better in all ages, young, young guys middle-aged guys and old guys. So I, I hope we really kind of touch on that, kind of bring that evidence out that's out there as well as talk about things that you can do. Yeah, I, I totally agree. And, you know, we're going to, we're going to give you some stats. We're going to give you some recommendations, how to improve. If you're listening and you're try, motiva- trying to motivate your partner to actually get, you know, their health in line, we'll give you some tips and tricks for this episode as well. So, um, Buckle up. We're going to have a great episode. This is going to be really fun. It's just going to be me and Kevin. Usually there is a guest, but this time we're just, we're, we're the professionals. We're the specialists on this one. So uh, enjoy the listen and let's get into it. As men's health specialists, we know guys are shaving their balls. Yeah, we examine a lot of you, so we literally see it, but we also have the data showing it too. That's right. According to research, over 85% of men trim their pubes. Not only that, but research shows that over 70% of women prefer a partner with at least partially trimmed pubic hair. So guys, we know you're trimming the edges, and we know that most women prefer you manscape. So if you're going to shave your balls, why not use the best men's grooming kit around? We're talking about Manscaped. With the Manscaped Performance Package 4.0, you get the Lawn Mower 4.0 with their all-new skin-safe electric trimmer that protects your balls from getting those cuts we've all had in the past. You also get the Weed Whacker 2.0 for trimming your nose and ear hairs. And let me tell you guys, we all need to do a better job of this. Yep, that's right. Kevin and I both have the performance package, and we really love it. Manscaping has never been easier for us. And for our listeners, we have a special promotion. Go to manscaped.com and enter promo code MANUP and get 20% off your first purchase. Go get your Manscaped products today. Your balls and your partner will thank you. One of the major reasons we do this podcast is to destigmatize conversation in men's health, and that includes mental health. Mental health constantly comes up in our podcast because it can impact so many other aspects of your life. That's why we are sponsored by BetterHelp, the world's largest therapy service. And listen, guys, we get it. Talking about this stuff can be hard, but BetterHelp makes it that much easier because it's 100% online, so you can get the help you need from the comfort of your own home. With BetterHelp, you can tap into a network of over 30,000 licensed and experienced therapists who can help you with a wide range of issues. To get started, you just answer a few questions about your needs and preferences in therapy. That way, BetterHelp can match you with the right therapist from their network. For our listeners, we have a special deal. You get 10% off your first month at BetterHelp.com backslash man up. That's BetterHelp.com slash man up. So make sure you're taking care of your mental health and sign up for BetterHelp today. All right, Kev. So here we go. Just you and me. All right. So solo pod talking about men's health stigmas. Um, I think the first thing we we need to do if we're going to normalize this conversation is that really address this idea that men don't want to talk about their health issues. And we actually have data supporting this idea that there is a stigma out there. So can you just kind of highlight some of the data that we know about men's health stigmas and and like what what do we know why are people not actually talking about their health their health problems here so you're right justin there are actually a few studies out there that have gotten specific numbers that we can kind of cite to that shows that guys just don't want to seek care all right and they're they're from Mm -hmm. all around the world we got one from britain britain all right it's a british social attitude survey. This was done in 2018. And they identified that men were less likely than women to seek medical help. 
35% men men reporting, reporting that they would seek help if they experienced a health problem. Only 35%. Like you would think maybe it's like crazy, 50% or something like that, but 35%. So, you know, no, just I mean, to know. It's, it's crazy. Dude. It's, it's, that's low. Like one out of three people, you know, if that even if they had a health problem, basically are still like, ah, oh, fuck this. I'm not going to do anything about it. Uh, only one third of them are going to be doing something. Two thirds are just going to, uh, unfortunately, you know, just bear that brunt of their health. Yeah, it's it's crazy. And just to just to so that you know, we're not biased and not saying that these are just British guys. So you know, there's another study in Australia. This was the Australian Longitudinal Study on Male Health, published in 2016. And basically, this showed that men were reluctant to talk about their health due to concerns about burdening others, maintaining self-reliance, and preserving their masculinity. This is a key thing that we'll kind of go back upon throughout the episode, talking about preservation of masculinity, men's health, our own health, and how that's all tied together. Um, There was another survey done by the National Pharmacy Association that basically showed that 66% of men did not feel comfortable discussing their health concerns openly. So that, that's that number is pretty conclusive. It's basically saying two thirds of men don't want to seek care, don't want to talk about care, and that this may all be, you know, tied to a component of masculinity. So, but Justin, now what, what's causing their reluctance to seek medical help? Well, I think I just want to quickly respond and highlight this that the studies that you talked about because, you know. We're not talking like this was like 10 years ago, three. This was literally in, you know, these studies are coming out 2018, 2016. So these are within, you know, five years, six years, eight years, less than 10 years out. Um, So this is a real thing. This is a problem that, you know, even though we've tried to normalize these conversations, it's still a really, really big issue. And I think a lot of the reasons why it's still a big issue is kind of what you were you were insinuating at. You know, there's this reluctance because of how men uh, identify themselves and, and this concept of masculinity. When we think of, when you think of a masculine guy, Kev, what, what are you thinking of? What am I thinking? I'm not going to lie. Yeah, like who? Thor, Thor kind of pops in my head. Thor, Thor is <laughs> that's a masculine a good one. Yeah. That's a good one. <laughs> Right, right. No, I think of like Arnold Schwarzenegger. I think of The Rock. I see, I, I think of like these jacked, Harry. So Kevin Chu, Harry, Kevin well, Chu does not with, pop up. Kevin Chu. <laughs> I mean, no, not me either. But you know, you know, these giant guys, they are able to provide for their families. They're able to fix not only their problems, the problems that their friends, their family have, their fathers, you know, they're they're the that's the idea of you know masculinity, of just you know, relying on yourself. And right. people relying on you to get things done. And when, when you have this idea of something going wrong in your life, whether it's, you know, a health scare, you know, so uh, a, a difficulty conceiving, you know, you're just not feeling like you are erectile dysfunction, lower energy, difficulties with muscle growth. These are things that, you know, you never planned on happening. And, you know, the media never shows you those guys getting old because, you know, they're, they're whole, they're getting paid to really, look that way forever and we, and we um, assume they have no issues with any of the things you just said you know great point great point um so you know when you when you don't when you when you have those issues and you can no longer compare yourself or put yourself in the frame of those guys you're not going to talk about it because you don't want to highlight those problems you want everyone to see you still as that provider that guy who's going to solve the problems that guy who is that masculine man and i and i think that it's, it's a problem, but it's a real thing. And now I think that there's other aspects of this. Uh, Like what, what are some other causes of reluctance to seek medical care within men, Kev? Well, there's, there's a number of things, right? There's a number of things. First off, there's the societal expectations of men and masculinity, kind of what we've been just talking about. Right. Talking about, right. Then there's the, Fear of stigma, right? Fear of being judged, stigmatized, or, you know, disclosing health problems. Emotional restraint. You know, men are often socialized to suppress their emotions, not show vulnerability, right? There's also... we don't talk about our problems because that's just the way that we were told not to do, right? We were just told not to talk about it. That's the stereotype. We're not supposed to speak about these things, right? Right. 
Um, there's also a topic or a reason, which is why we do this podcast, the lack of awareness or knowledge of health issues. Guys are kind of, if we don't know much about something, we might not want to go seek or talk about it or acknowledge it, any of that stuff. And it's true. That, and, and that's something that Justin and I are very much aware of, which is why we do this podcast. So we can kind of try to get this information out in easy formats for all you guys to learn about. Uh, and finally, also, there's just the difficulty in communicating issues, right? Guys, just terrible communicators. Yeah, I mean, uh, most of the time I've been in clinic, you've been in clinic with guys and you'll ask them a question. They'll be like, how are you feeling? And they're like, good. Or they'll just be like, bad. And it's like, why? Tell me why. Tell me more. <laughs> And, uh, and it's a real problem. <laughs> it's, it's a problem. And I, I listen, we're guys, guys, I, you know, I'll get on the phone. How was your day? Great. Okay. Like what, well, you know, that's just sometimes how it goes, but you know, when it, when it comes to men's health you, or your health in general, you really have to be able to verbalize what the concerns are because we can't help you unless you tell us. Um, now, I think we've established now that there is this problem with these stigmas. There's a reason behind it, but I think a lot of people may, especially guys say, okay, who gives a shit? Who cares? Like we don't talk about it. You know, there's men's health problems. Um, but I don't really want to talk about it. I still don't want anyone to know now, uh, Kevin, what are the potential problems of not talking about it with a healthcare provider? What are the risks of not actually seeking help for these issues? Well, fact for all you guys out there, we, we don't live forever. You know, we're not invincible. <laughs> Big news, bro. Just Breaking making sure we all know. Yeah. And, you know, if you look at the stats out there, a lot of guys, especially here in America, are not in ideal shape, all right? Right. Or, like, not ideal fitness. And so... You can think that things are going fine, but, you know, there, there's a common situation that I know that Justin and I commonly see. You know, we got someone comes in, they're a little bit overweight, looks unhealthy, and we asked them, and we, we, tell, we literally asked them, we're like, so, you know, what, what kind of issues do you got going on? And they'll be like, we got no problem. No problem, right? Yep. And that kind of leads to questions like, oh, yeah, so when did you last see your primary care doctor? And they'll say something like, 20 years ago, right? 20 years <laughs> where I've been in perfect health in their mind, no issues, nothing wrong. And so when it's talking about health problems and here on this podcast, we talk a lot about sexual health problems. It's that, and this is Justin's favorite saying, sexual health is health, right? Yep. And these problems uh, can be a warning sign. A big one that we, we, we always kind of, you know, use is erectile dysfunction, right? Justin, what does erectile dysfunction like if a guy comes in with ED, is it likely that he may have some other issues? Oh, 100%. So we know that it's what we call the canary in the coal mine uh, for cardiovascular risk, heart attacks and things like that. In fact, today I sent, I saw at least two guys in this scenario who had not seen a doctor, came in for, for erections. They hadn't seen the doctor in a long time, did a hemoglobin A1C, which is a test to see if they have diabetes. They I diagnosed him with diabetes. I said, you got to go see an endocrinologist. You got to go see a cardiologist because God knows what else is going on. And, you know, heart problems is a big one. Diabetes, like I just said, potential infections, uh, depression, anxiety. These are all things that are directly correlated to your sexual health. Sexual health is health. It is a sign of things that are going bad in your body or a potential warning of things that could be coming down the pipeline. And just like you said, you know, maybe not talking about it today isn't a problem, but ignoring it and suppressing it, you know, there's going to be a point where it's too late and you can't, where we're talking about, it's not going to solve the problem. You know, you're going to go into the ER and something bad's going to happen. And, you know, go ahead, Kev. Yeah, no, I want to bring some up. It, it just kind of bring uh, something that I've listened to. I've been listening to a, a few other podcasts and there's, but something that's been brought up that actually has made a real big impression on me. And I, I want to kind of transmit this information to guys. So mm -hmm. I think a lot of guys are like, hey, this, this is just going to happen no matter what. I'm a guy. I'll find my way and figure it out. Right. With health, there are two kinds of ways that health issues can affect you. If you're going to be predisposed to it, 
the health issue, you can end up, you know, you're going to die with it. You're going to have it. Let's say you're, you're destined in your family, you have diabetes. All right, you're going you're gonna to die with it. Fine. You, it's going to happen. But it's difference between dying from it and dying because of it, like dying with it or dying because of it. Dying with right. it, you've been able to manage it, you know, keep it under control and potentially even prolong your life, improve the quality of your life. And so these are things that you can do. They're in your control. Health is not something that is like, hey, let's just leave it up and see what happens. No, you can actively learn about it. You can actively participate in your health. So, No, I think that's a good point. And I think that kind of goes hand in hand with like this idea of masculinity, right? Where, you know, guys like to take matters in their own hands and just saying like, oh, well, you know, my family has heart disease. My family has a risk of diabetes. I guess I'm just going to do it too. That's not that that's an actually contraindicate a contra, contra contradiction to those other thought processes. Right. And I really love that idea of you can die with a disease or you can die of it. Sometimes you can't control that, uh, uh, whether you have it or not, but how you respond, just like in anything in this world, uh, really makes the difference um, in your quality of life, in your happiness, in your family's life. Um, because if you are really the patriarch, if you're, you're that person that you think you are, you know, you want to be around for the people that you're, you love the people that you care for. And, uh, the best way to do that is talk to your, to talk to your providers. Um, and, and that kind of, you know, <laughs> I'm going to use almost like, uh, I'm going to use the analogy that I use for the pullout method for patients where, you know, the, I ask for, you know, oh, do you use contraceptive measures? No, I just use the pullout method. And it's like, I, I tell them, well, it works 100% of the time until it doesn't, you know, not talking about your, your health problems is great. And you, 100% of the time, you don't have a health problem until you do. And then that time you have it is a lot bigger problem than it could have been before. It's just like <laughs> the pullout method. So, uh, so you I know, like these are all preventative missions. I just came up with that as a spot, but that's I love what it. I'm thinking I love right it. Now. I love it. Well, Justin, no, on that note, though, on, on that note, so we're, we're talking here, right? You're talking like, all right, you, you talk to a healthcare provider, talk to a healthcare provider. But we live in a world now where like, all right, you know, I, we encourage you to talk to a healthcare provider, but there are other resources out there, right? There are other resources. You got the internet. Absolutely. We literally can get access to anything. And so... Internet's available, so a lot of healthcare information can be found online. So, Justin, you, you've kind of really you know, done a lot of work in this area, really understand it. How can this be a problem for dudes who are like in front of their laptop and just be like, oh, okay, I'm going to search this health problem. What's going to happen? It's a great question, and it's an important idea. And I, I do want to backtrack because I do want to explain this idea of why the internet has become popular, especially for men's health and men's health problems. You know, we talk about Dr. Google, we talk about, uh, you know, a lot. Uh, we're going to talk more about Dr. TikTok, Dr. YouTube and, and Dr. Instagram, but I, I, Who's the best? I, th oh, oh, well, I think pro there, there's really, I, I don't know if there's a good Dr. Answer. Man, a podcast. Shit. Yeah. Dr. Man, a <laughs> podcast, Dr. Chu and Dr. Dubin are the best. Um, but I, I think this idea of why are people going online instead of talking to doctors? Well, we talked about these stigmas. Their their guys are obviously embarrassed about you know talking about their health and going online. You can do it from the privacy of your home. But there's also this idea that that fix it, I can do it attitude. I call this the IKEA problem mm. that guys have, <laughs> um, or the direction problem. Where, you know, a lot of guys, including me, I literally just you know, there's furniture behind me. I just built that. No big deal, but uh, uh, it's not IKEA. It's a little higher than IKEA, but whatever. Whoa, anyway, whoa, but, hey, but, don't make judgments on IKEA. <laughs> <laughs> no hate on IKEA, but you know that took me a shit a really long time to build, and you know. I'm one of those guys. I'm going to try and figure it out before I look at the direction. So I was looking there. I'm trying to figure out this thing, put it together, and I don't. I want to try and fix it and make it my on my own. Um, without the help of others, including the directions. And I'll tell you, you know, I've done these things before, like Ikea furniture, where it takes me so much longer because I don't want to go to the directions. <laughs> I don't want to go to the source of information. Same thing with getting directions for driving. I'm not going to use anything. Even if I have the nav, I'm going to try and see if I can remember on my own. And you struggle and it takes a long time. Sometimes you finish the piece, but it doesn't look right. And people come in and they go, 
Yeah, that kind of doesn't look right. And you're like, it's fine. It's fine. Don't worry about it. I made it myself. It's okay. And, and eventually you come to terms with like, okay, this is piece of furniture is pretty fucked up. I should probably get something done. And you eventually follow the directions and it gets fixed, looks better. And not only are you happy about it, but your friends, your family members, whoever you're living with. So, you know, I think that this Ikea problem is in a direct relation to men's health problems, right? Guys, we want to fix our problems. We don't want external advice. Obviously, we don't want to talk about it, but we also want to know that we can fix the problem ourselves. And just like IKEA Furniture, we're going to go tr- go online. We're going to see if we can figure out a way to do, do this ourselves. And the information online is shit. I mean, very, very bluntly, <laughs> the, the information online is terrible. It's bad. We have data to support that. Um, but you know, eventually you're going to have to go talk to your doctor if you want to get those problems fixed, because, you know, those gas station ED pills, the shit that you find at GNC, you know, the thing your friend says is probably going to work. Some ad you see on, (laughs) on TikTok is not going to work. And then where are you? You're left worse off than you were before. Um, you know, you're delaying the inevitable. You're, you're depriving yourself of the health care that you need. Um, and you're probably spending some money in the process. So that's the Ikea, um, idea. Love Kev, it. any comments about it? No, I, I love everything that you, exactly the way that you portray it. The, the Ikea analogy is, is spot on and there's, there is a ton of crap out there, man. There is right. You know it. Just so much shit. So much shit. I, I mean, mean, we've gotten asked, you've gotten asked so many things like, does it work? And you're like, well, I don't even know what the fuck this is. Right. I mean, it's, it seems like you can be an expert now in almost anything by just being in front of a computer and typing a few things, you know? <laughs> it's true. It's, it's pretty true. It's really amazing. Uh, but I yeah, mean, I, you got these guys on TikTok. They're like 16 years old. They're like the marketing geniuses uh, and telling me how to like scam people. I don't know. It's crazy. And, and that's that's the part that maybe is kind of scary, right? Sure. Marketing is very effective. I'm subject mm-hmm. to marketing. I'll see something. I'm Same. like, wow, I kind of want that. It's just gotten a little scary now that marketing is entering healthcare, right? Like kind of in, 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 in a way that can really affect how you're going to be. And that's kind of then a little bit, I, I think a little bit dangerous. Fine. The innocuous marketing is like, all right, I want to go end up buying that shirt because I like the way I like it. Fine. You've lost a little bit of money there. But whenever your your health is kind of being put like at risk, then I think that's that's a big issue. We're selling health. We're, se- we're selling health improvements. We're selling quality of life improvements, not only through, you know, lifestyle measures, but now through medications, through devices, through diets, through exercises, through whatever it is that half of it is bullshit. Because at the end of the day, the truth is like people don't like to, to know that the, the best thing for your health is going to talk to a healthcare provider and then probably exercising and eating healthy. And that's not a secret to anyone. Um, but, but let's go <laughs> into what you were talking about with regards to the marketing, social media. Let's go back to those, the, those stats for the internet. So in 2022, 80% of us adults use at least one social media site. Uh, 72% of adults use the internet for researching their health information. And, you know, we mentioned Dr. Google and, and really Dr. TikTok, Dr. YouTube have really become very, very prominent in the last few years, especially since COVID with people getting health information. A recent study showed that, you know, before Americans would go talk to their healthcare providers, 33% of Americans would go to YouTube for health advice. Wow. Uh, 20% go to TikTok to solve their health issues. And 37% turn to influencers, um, you know, for health advice because they felt Keyword that they were more accessible than oh. doctors. Influencers. Wow. Influencers who the, you know, who are modeling clothing and you're going to trust these people. Um, and then, this is actually the most concerning one that was kind of what you were hinting at, what, we, what I was hinting at. 50%, that's half of Americans, have purchased health products after seeing an ad on social media. Woo, 50%. That's, that means between me and you. One I mean, of us, I did it. Well, oh, there you it. go. I did it. There you go. There you go. <laughs> I remember when I was in med school, I bought 
raspberry ketones from Dr. Oz. Oh. I thought I was going to lose weight. I did. I remember <laughs> doing it. So, like, even I'm susceptible. A good ad can get anyone. And that's the truth. But I think that the, the bottom line is you have to be aware of it. And, you know, this is a problem. Uh, I mean, what happens when you buy a product? Exactly what I said. Well, you're going to buy a product online. You don't know if it's actually going to help you. At best, you're wasting money on the product. At worst, you're delaying your care. You're wasting money on the product. And you're potentially harming yourself. God knows what the hell you're doing, whether it's a device, whether it's a product, you know, there's products out there that are like a thousand dollars that do jack. So, you know, you really have to be, be careful out there, you know? Yeah. One thing from past episodes that we've talked about and something that me and you are, you know, we, we take a lot of care of is just these shockwave machines that you can buy and use at home for ed right yep. they, they advertise the guys awesome ads you know they're like this is the you know i'm not going to say a name but you know very very masculine name you know it's like cheap you know, pay yeah. a few of these and you're going to be able to make your penis work again at home great ad great marketing i have so many of my patients come and talk to me about it and they're like hey does that work i'm, I'm going to probably buy one pick one up and you know it's it's effective. It's effective, but we we're just trying to disseminate to you guys that hey, you got to. There's no shortcuts in life. There's no, really no shortcuts in life. That that's one thing that we got boiled down to. And you know, some of these things are going to kind of stay like this is an easy way to to get improvements. So, well, just to clarify, the ad is effective. The product is not there. Effective. Yeah, yeah. Fact, 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 fact. <laughs> the product does not work. The ad. <laughs> is incredibly effective. Right, right, right. Um, and, 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 you know, so everyone's going to social media and, and not only are they going there, they're going there for health information. Uh, you know, I did a study when I was at Northwestern. We looked at the health information online and men's health topics. We looked at TikTok and Instagram. We categorized topics such as semen retention, uh, testosterone, erectile dysfunction, um, vasectomy, uh, you know, and all of the data on these, on these topics was horrible such bad data. And the other problem was this, not only was that, well, the data was bad, but it was bad because it wasn't being given by healthcare providers. I think only about 10% of the content was really created by doctors at all. So, you know, people are going more and more online to social media, to the, uh, to the websites, but they're not getting the data from doctors. So, so that's really, really important for you to understand. Yeah, and so it's why and why do you think that is, Justin? Why why do you think it's first off, okay, sure. Maybe not enough doctors are making content. That's one, right? But right. but why 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 are why are guys just more led to these sites? Like what what's the reasoning behind it? More accessibility? I don't know. I think it's just accessibility and it's a strict numbers game. You know, you just have more non-doctors than doctors on websites and they, and I, you know, it is more time. And if it is, you know, truly a company that is investing their time and resources, that's going to get a lot more hits than, you know, an actual doctor for the most part. Now we do have some wonderful doctors out there providing really good information. Shout out Dr. Rena Malik, shout out Dr. Ashley Winter, shout out Dr. Mo Kara, shout out Dr. Rachel Rubin, shout out, you know, uh, Dr. Kasperson, Dr. Stryker, all, a lot of them, majority of them have been on the show. If not, they will hopefully come on. Uh, but you know, these are all really excellent people that we know that are, have, we, we follow, but you know, you can only do so much. There's so many companies, there's so many people who are investing their time and money. And a lot of the things for doctors, these are passion projects. Kevin and I, you know, we're doing this because we really like to do this. This is fun for us. Um, so I think it's, it is a strict numbers game. I think there is a financial game uh, with businesses, um, but it can be really overwhelming. And then you have the other people who argue, okay, so like, I'm not going to social media. I'm going online. I'm checking, you know, some of these uh, media articles for updates. And, you know, I think the other aspect of this is that you have to understand what media articles have become. They've become clickbait. And that's, you know, we're all BuzzFeed at this point, I, you know, it's been uh, written all by become... artificial intelligence. That's probably what it is. <laughs> well, BuzzFeed is literally just artificial intelligence <laughs> at this point. Um, but, you know, 
you have to understand what the internet has become. And even these media sites that are there, they're, you know, health forward, you know, Kevin's been interviewed by a lot of them. I have been interviewed by a lot of them. And I think that we both like being interviewed by them because I think we help put context to what the actual studies are. And, and I want to highlight this because a lot of articles are sensationalized because they want that click. There was a study that was, did a systematic review. Um, and that's basically, you know, a conglomerate of all these different studies that looked at this, this topic. And basically what they did was they looked at popular media articles that discussed or described academic articles. You know, for example, like a men's health article or a New York Post or a Cosmo, and they were describing a new study that came out. And what they found was that 40%, 48% of media articles used language that was too strong to describe study conclusions, meaning that the conclusions of the paper of the media articles were sensationalized, right? They wanted to get those clicks. And that, that makes sense, right? And and then even more concerning about 58%, so over half of the media articles, inaccurately reported the study <laughs> results, questions, interventions, and populations of the study. So not only were they sensationalizing the studies, they didn't even describe what the studies were doing. They didn't even know. And that's where you know it's important because to some degree, I don't blame the journalists because they are not doctors. They are not scientists. They're trying to interpret data that is you know, not in their field, but, and that's why, you know, Kevin and I try to come on, we try to describe our interpretations of data, what it really means, if it is important, but you have to understand the importance of taking this knowledge as a grain for, with a grain of salt. You're absolutely correct. The, the objective of a lot of these media articles is to get clicks, right? And I will tell you, if Justin and I got on here and we brought on a couple of these actual academic articles and we sat here and reviewed it it would be so boring for you if we because <laughs> the objective true. the objective of these academic articles is to be objective right so like look it's you're yeah. not going to get like this really amazing like look like 90 90 percent of patients are going to get definite improvement off that no no it's a pretty honest answer like eh, honestly probably maybe it's a 50 percent chance but you know yeah, this is the outliers. What, what, this is why this study doesn't work. There's, it, we we try to be as you know, you know, objective without adding like trying to be like this is what we think should happen. It's just objective data, and that is actually really fucking boring. At the end of the day, there's it nothing. There's nothing be. sensational about it. It's true, and and you know, I think there's always context, right? So you know, there's a lot of really interesting ways to interpret data, and you know, I'll give you an example, you know, of. The question that we always get, it's always a popular topic is like, can masturbating decrease my risk of prostate cancer? And there was this one study that showed yeah. if you ejaculate more than 21 times a month, your risk of prostate cancer decreases. And the question is, and so everyone's like, oh shit, hell yeah, I'm going to masturbate, have all the sex just <laughs> to reduce. And actually some people get stressed out about it, right? It's like, oh fuck, I actually have to ejaculate 21 times a month in order to reduce my risk. Realistically, is that a thing? No, it's not a thing. It doesn't really matter because if you look at the actual data, right. although it was clinic, it was statistically significant. We're never going to, there's a difference between clinical significance, statistical significance, and you're never going to truly, if, if you told me that you jerked off 25 times a month <laughs> and then the other guy jerked off 10 times a month, Am I going to say you definitely going to have a lower risk for prostate cancer? Absolutely not. There are too many factors to be involved. What if one of you has a family history? What if one of you right. smoking? We will never be able to quantify whether that is truly a significant thing in your life. And will it actually impact you? Chances are no. Now, um, when you read an article, you're going to, that's not what the conclusion is <laughs> going to be. The con conclusion, conclusion is going to be, you need to have ejaculate. You need to ejaculate. Like ejaculating more will save your life, and that's a fact. That's what they will say, right? Download this app. We'll remind you to ejaculate every. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, 
And and that's a problem where where people take things literally, and you have to understand the data where you know literal is not always good. There's always context to even studies, even though there is objective data. The objective data has context. Right. So I, I think you know the bottom line with all this stuff is the internet can really be a confusing, <laughs> misleading, and potentially dangerous place for your health. You really gotta be careful out there because there's so much misinformation that you really need to talk with a healthcare provider before you're like buying any of these products, taking advice from someone else online. I now I have was. a question for you, Kev. What's up? I got a question for you. What's we just up? talked about how, how shitty the information is online. How can our patients, how can our listeners actually get good, accurate information online? Like, uh, how can they approach What's a safe approach? Because listen, we're realistic here. People are going to go online and that's okay. You know, I go online, you go online. We still research our health, but how can they get good online information? So you go to google.com and you type in <laughs> man up podcast. <laughs> yes, you're golden. exactly. You're golden. You're golden. <laughs> golden, golden. <laughs> no, like something I tell all my patients, you, you got to be active. And, and I guess one thing that always kind of comes to my mind is, is that scene from Wally -E where everything is just passive? You're just kind of like stuck in the seat and you're just getting fed information mm. and you're just yeah. consuming, right? And, and there's a there's a bit of part right. of me that's afraid that myself or even the society just becoming you're just consuming, you're just clicking through stuff like just absorbing information and not thinking about where is this information coming from? Who is this guy talking to me? Like who the hell is telling right. me to do this? And you're just kind of like, oh crap i gotta go do this right now you know i gotta go ejaculate every day right now you know <laughs> <laughs> not to say i haven't <laughs> anyways no, I mean, you know, marketing, marketing, marketing you is really good yeah. out there <laughs> so anyways <laughs> it's it's it, you gotta you gotta question things right you should question justin and i right now as we're talking you right that's fine be like yeah. who who are these guys and look us up you know see you know, why are they doing this? And, you know, when you start looking at what other people and what their exterior motives may be, then things will kind of start coming to light. So a couple of things is just trying to verify who's coming from. There's like good websites out there, like just talking from like sexual medicine stuff. There are great websites out there. SMSNA.org, great website. If you're mm -hmm. worried about male fertility, ASRM, the American Society of Reproductive Medicine, great website. If you want to just find urology information, urology websites, great. Like th these places are, you should go. Not, not the TikTok, you know, guy who's like, hey, look, like I'm, I'm 30 years old, but I know what to do for your prostate. Like, come on. Like, no, they probably don't, you know? And so, absolutely. Um, you know, that's, that's the way you got to approach it. Just constantly questioning what, who, what, and why, you know, the information that you're getting. I think it's a great way of summarizing it. You know, like you can't just blindly trust people online. And I, and I find that funny too, because I see patients all the time and they're like, eh, you know, I'm going to, you, you hear it from anyone. Uh, you know, I don't know. I'm going to get a second opinion. I'm going to yeah. get a third opinion. Yeah. I don't care. Get a second opinion, get a third opinion. It, your doctor doesn't care. You should be, get as many opinions Absolutely. as you want. But when they come in, they go, well, you know, my buddy said he saw this online and I did it and he said it worked. They don't even think twice about it. It's, it's, yeah. there's some kind Love of it. disconnect there. You know, yeah. it, I see it with my grandfather and his friends, you know, well, my, what do you, what do you think about the magnets? I'm like, what are you talking about? He's like, well, I just bought these magnets that they're, they're supposed to be good on your health. And then I'll be like, what? It's like, yeah, all, we all got magnets on. And then I'm like, well, and then I'll tell him to go do something with his health. He's like, Show me the data on that. I'm like, uh, oh, okay. So like there, there, there is a real disconnect with a lot of people, right? It's like, yeah. you're going to trust your buddy over it, or you're going to trust some guy online. I don't know why sometimes, but there is just that, like, I got to get a second or third opinion when I listen to a doctor, which is once again, fine, but you're not getting that second or third opinion online. <laughs> make that second opinion. If you hear something online, make that second opinion, your healthcare provider. Don't make it, you know, your buddy. You know, and you get that third opinion from your buddy, but you know, you can make that first opinion online, make your second opinion, a healthcare provider. I think that that's kind of a good way to live. Yeah. I love it. What, what magnets is your, 
<laughs> magnets. Are that's, why, that's why. Shout out to my grandpa. Hopefully he doesn't listen to this episode. He had <laughs> magnet necklaces. He spent a shitload of money that just destroyed him for it. It was just he said it made him stronger. I was like, I don't know what you're talking about, man. That's crazy. <laughs> it reminds me of those things that weren't the pitchers wearing that for a while. They're wearing something. I don't know. Oh, dude, it was pretty much that, like the copper things and all <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah, absolutely. That's what it was. Just crazy. It was not cheap. <laughs> well to each their own right yeah i guess um all right let's let's jump to another let me let me ask you a question now justin all right let's 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 move on now from this online stuff let's let's go to something else let's talk about we we touched upon it earlier that guys can sometimes feel embarrassed or shame when it comes to talking about men's health or in particular stuff where we talk about sexual health all right. So, you know, how can guys overcome this? You know, I think this is uh, something we've been kind of discussing a little bit and hinting at. But I think the most important thing you said before is that I think a lot of guys don't talk about their health because they don't understand it or they don't have that knowledge. And I, I think one of the most important things you can do is educate yourself. You know, sexual health problems are common. Most people have most men have or will have a sexual health problem. It's a statistical fact. We know this. So once you realize that and you kind of understand that, that you're not alone, I think you are, and that, you know, for, for all intents and purposes in this sense, you're not special. Like you're not alone. You're not special. You're not unique in this way. That should actually make you feel good um, that you can and hopefully should. And you can get address, uh, get see a healthcare provider and address the problem. How, I how, think, this, Justin? You know, how about this? How yeah. about this? I'm going to ask you. So that way our listeners can know. Justin, what are some things that, you know, we're not going to name specific patients, but patients have come to talk to you in the past week about just name this stuff. Uh, Peyronie's disease, erectile yeah, dysfunction, penis. male infertility. Yeah, male infertility, premature ejaculation, delayed premature ejaculation. ejaculation. You're right. Look, so, these are stuff that so we, we are, and these are not rare. It's not like, oh, I had one patient with premature ejaculation over the past year that I saw. No. No. No, no. and I think, I think it's, and a lot of guys, you know, when they come in, they're like, oh, I can't believe I'm t- saying this. I can't believe, like, I'm here, you know, I, I got this. And my first response is, dude, you're literally the 10th person in this, in this, I've talked to today with that exact problem. I literally right. talked to like five dudes right before you, same problem. You're, you're fine, man. You're here, you're doing the right thing. So I, I think that that's a big part. Obviously seeking help, you know, is a way to overcome helping overcome your, your, your shame or your embarrassment. Cause if we're talking with you, we can help you feel like we just said, normalize this conversation. We can make you feel comfortable in in a potentially uncomfortable situation because I can tell you no one talks better dick and balls than than Kevin and I. We'll put that out against anybody out there. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But but I I think the other things is we also hinted at is, you know, use good data-driven online resources, Urology Care Foundation, ASRM.org, SMSNA. Dot org uh, are great ones. Uh, you can go to reliable resources. We named a couple who have great content online uh, already. Um, and, and then I think like one of the harder things I think for men to do is is this idea of being self compassionate. You know, be good and kind to yourself, and recognize that you really deserve to live a healthy and happy life. You know, you don't need to take this burden on of your health problems that maybe are, I are, you know, causing some identity issues, right? Maybe you just don't feel like that man that you are and that you had in the past. And, and guess what? If you decide to do something about it, we can get you back to where you were. We can get you feeling to, to that strong man that you thought you, or you felt like you were before. And if you're not compassionate about and kind to yourself about it, and you just beat yourself up about it and kind of ignore it, you know, you're, you're just not going to get back to where you want to be. I love that. Love that self-compassion. You know, it's, yeah, maybe we're being just too hard on ourselves, you know, and just saying that, Hey, look, this is, this is how the way it is. I'm gonna just live with it. And, you know, 
there are things out there that can be done as we just keep hounding on over and over again that, you know, <laughs> healthcare professionals can help you. All right. And just go find the right information and don't delay your care because delaying your care can cause worse issues later on. You know, that's, that's just the theme. Yeah. Of this. It, it's just going back to that idea. Like you just said it, you know, guys will say, Oh, you know, just, it is what it is. And that's like, for some reason for their health, that's the only time guys I feel like think that way. It is, you know, it just is what it is. If there's a problem, otherwise they're like, oh, I'm going to fucking fix this thing. It's not right. just it is what it is. If I got a right. runny sink, it's not just it is what it is. If my car is broken, it's not just it is what it is. But for whatever reason they say for their health, oh, you know, it just is what it is. And just like those other things, we can fix them. Uh, 99% of the time we can may not be able to get you back to 100%, but we can improve something. And that all starts with you not saying it is what it is. It should be something else like this fucking sucks. Let's fix this thing. Just like everything else. Love it, man. Love it. Well, this now let a... me ask you. No, you're going to ask me a question. Oh, all right. Yeah, no, no, yeah. Go... no, no, go ahead. You go ahead. Now I, I want to know, like we were talking about how guys can get themselves better and and you know really you know destigmatize the conversation themselves but i think a lot of this it, it also may you know sometimes partners are listening to these podcasts or their partners want to encourage you know or loved ones want to encourage guys to get the help they need even if they're stubborn or they're still having trouble you know either identifying that they have a problem or acknowledging the problem or seeking help for it Kev, what are ways in which, you know, partners or loved ones who want to support men uh, in dealing with, you know, their, their sexual health stigmas, how can their partners or loved ones, you know, help, help those men overcome those, those stigmas and, and get help? Communication is key, right? Communication is key. We talk about it a lot through all our other episodes. But in particular with this, I think communication is really, really important. Mm -hmm. One, being a mm -hmm. good listener, right? Listening to their concerns, listening for signs of issues, you know, being, you know, when you're listening, you're able to acknowledge. And that's, that's key, like a step one that you got to be able to do. You know, two is kind of like creating a, a place, a safe, you know, what, what Justin and I try to do when we're in the office, same kind of thing with the partner, like you, a safe haven, like you, there's no, no judgments being made in this space when we're talking the worst thing you can do is someone suffering with like a sexual health issue and to kind of point it out and just like make fun of it right and so that that's yeah uh, another thing um and education right again we talked about it earlier on justin kind of talked about it just educating being informed knowing about it because that's showing that again you're being active in the process saying hey look i'm you know i've listened i know that this is what's going on i've done some research maybe this can help Again, you're creating a safe environment where, again, no judgments are being made, and you're only going to improve things as long as that's the sentiment that's being felt. And finally, it's just to really encourage them to seek professional help with all this info that you know. So, I think it's I think that is excellent advice, um, and uh, I think a lot of it that support really goes a long way. I I know you and I both will agree that a lot of the times men come in with their partners. I, I yeah. will say because, because a lot of times the partner is the one dragging their ass in there and they don't oh, yeah. want to be there. And sometimes even the partner knows more about their health problems than they do. And they're answering the questions, not they, them. So I think it's always interesting and, and you have those relationships and you have people and we see it all the time willing to step up for their loved one who sometimes just doesn't want to step up themselves. So I, I think it's, it's okay to do that. And even the manliest men, sometimes they just are like, yeah, I guess I'm not going to talk about it, but if she comes, then I'm going to talk about it and we're going to get this done. So it, it, it you know, best of bill, you know what I say? It Best ability is availability. So if you're there for your partner, oh, yeah. um, I think it goes a long way. Yeah, that's well said, man. And a good way to end it. Yeah, I think so. So uh, thanks again for everyone for listening. Uh, really enjoyed this episode. 
uh kevin and i hopefully will do a couple more uh of these more often i think i think they're always fun and good to do um, yeah. but we have a couple really good episodes coming up that we've recorded excited to record a few more um so really good stuff coming our way your way um as always it is always always appreciated if you can download subscribe uh so please please subscribe and give us a review five stars and comment on itunes spotify um follow us on youtube subscribe on youtube uh you know comment that's always appreciated it really helps us out helps helps us um and helps the podcast um we're, what is our website kevin the website is www.themanuppod.com yep and then all of our socials um at the man up pod uh as on twitter tiktok and instagram you can follow us there as well that's always appreciated um we're always putting enough clips uh always love engagement on that as well but for kevin and justin thanks for listening until next time have a good one